Once we've rough sanded the box, the next step is to reinforce the mitre joints. Now, the mitre joints um, are strong, but because you're gluing end grain to end grain, it's not as strong as if you're gluing uh, long grain to long grain. So what I do is I reinforce the uh, the mitre joint with a veneer key. It not only reinforces the joint, but it, it looks quite nice as well. So the manual way of doing it is to mark uh, 10 mils in from the top and 10 mils in from the bottom and then 10 mils down both ends as well so basically what we end up doing is we end up putting a cut like that if I wasn't only making one box what I would do is I would then put that on my clamp and I'd get a Japanese saw and just put that cut in 10 mils into there and into there and what we do is we, we then get a, a slice of veneer and we, we glue that in place as you're probably aware with most of my videos I don't like doing it that way because it takes a long time one off pieces is alright but uh, with batch jobs you can't so what you can get is one of these commercially you can get one of these it just basically goes on your router table and we can put the slots in this way. I've experimented with the with the commercial stuff, and I just don't like the thickness of the the blade. So what I've done is I've made my own little uh, router blade. I've just modified an existing uh, router bit and just put a little blade on there. It's just uh, that that cutting blade is actually made from an old Japanese saw. It's only 0.6 or 0.7 mils thick, so I've just cut an old Japanese saw, um, the spring steel out of the, the old Japanese saw and just modified it myself and, and put it into that. So that goes into place there and what I've got is a little jig. Now this is what it looks like. It looks pretty... Everyone who comes to my workshop always wonders what the hell is this. This is a jig that I use that I clamp to my router fence and what it is is I basically get it in place like that, I'm not sure whether you can see it, so I'll move the camera around. Uh, once that's in place and the router's on, you basically just push it in and out and it makes a perfect cut every time. And if you set it 10 mils off the table, that means it'll cut 10 mils up that way. So you cut, them, cut all four sides like that and then turn it upside down and cut the other side. That's the jiggle set up. Uh, once it's set up, it's actually quite easy to cut the slots. I'll move the camera out of the way and I'll show you how quickly it's done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. All eight slots are cut, all of them are identical, as you can see. Once we've cut in the slots, all we have to do is just glue in the, the veneer keys. That's the next step. Once the eight slots are cut for each of the box, we just need to cut the veneer. Now this is a piece of veneer, scrap piece of veneer, and as you know, the, the, um, the grain runs that way. So what we'll do is rewind the, the grain perpendicular to the actual mitre joint. So what we'll do is we'll trim this up now. We only need about that much. Here's a contrasting timber so that you've got the the um, the, the dark brown walnut and this is I think I don't even know what this veneer is but we'll just cut little triangles out of that. One, two, three, four, Seven and eight. Now with the glue up, what I do is I use a bit of Type One Three. I just grab that and I basically squeeze the um, the glue straight into the slot until it comes out the other side. Okay, so once that glue is in place there. I then grab the veneers 
and I paint both sides of it and I just slide it in place that's the first one so just eight of those Now I won't bore you with all eight, so I'll just show you how I've done two. They just slide in place. Now you'll see that the glue squeezes out there, which is good. Now I just basically give that a, a light touch, just to spread it evenly, make sure that there's no gaps. And you just do uh, the rest of the box like that. Right, I'm just putting on the last one now. So I've gone through and I've put eight on so they're all stuck in now I'll go back and just clean up the glue line just to help it set and make sure the glue is filled up all the any voids um, I'm not too fussed about the glue it'll just sand off or, or we'll just carve it off tomorrow so once I've finished all of this I'll just let it sit overnight uh, this is one of the worst steps in box making, I don't like this step um, I think the fumes get to me so I usually get a bit hot and heated like I've got a fever after I've glued a few of this these together, so that's that box finished and here are the other four I normally just let that sit like that overnight and when you're doing 50, 100 at a time it gets very boring and very lobotonous. I'm making five for, for this batch just for a, a special client who wanted some in walnut. That's what it looks like. I'll let it sit overnight. And tomorrow morning we'll clean up the box.